Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie, and I believe that all readers should read children's literature, especially adults. So that's what we do on the Kid Lit Love podcast. We celebrate all things children's literature, picture books, early readers, middle grade, and young adult novels too. Whether you're an adult reading to your inner child or connecting the young readers in your lives with fantastic books, you've come to the right place. Each week, we'll talk to a different children's literature author and discuss their books, their hopes and dreams for readers, their writing process, and much, much more. So grab a notebook to build your TBR and let's get to today's episode of Kid Lit Love. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Kid Lit Love podcast. I'm Stephanie, your Kid Lit Loving host, welcoming you to another weekly conversation with a children's literature author. And guess what? We are talking to both the author and the illustrator again. Last week, we were lucky enough to have Omar Abid and Hatam Ali come on together to talk about the book that almost rhymed. And this week, we are chatting with another author and illustrator team. Suma Subramaniam and Tara Anand are here to talk about their brand new picture book coming out in just a couple of days. My name is As Long As a River. It is a beautiful book in so many ways, and I cannot wait to talk to them about it. Suma and Tara, welcome to the Kid Lit Love podcast. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for having us, Stephanie. I've Thank been you. a fan of your podcast. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. So together, you two have created something beautiful and meaningful and magical on the page. I know it is a new project for the two of you together, but you both have a backlist of projects and books under your belt. And so I would love to begin with those introductions Suma, do you mind jumping in first and, and tell us a bit about you and your writing? Absolutely. Um, so my name is Suma Subramaniam, and uh, during the day, I hire software engineers for a, a software company. And during the night, I write for children and young adults. And my interests and passions in writing for children are mostly centered around uh, STEM and STEAM-related topics. Uh, as well as India and Indian heritage. So um, uh, so that's what I write about. And my picture books include uh, Namaste is a Greeting uh, from Candlewake. Uh, she sang for India, how MS Subalakshmi used her voice for change from um, Farrar Strauss and Jeru, The Runaway Dosa, uh, A Bindi Can Be, and a few other books. Um, I'm also the contributing author of The Hero Next Door, uh, which uh, was published in 2019 um, by Penguin Random House. Uh, my poems have been published in Poetry Foundations, Poetry Magazine, as well as What is Hope and other anthologies for children. Um, I live in Seattle with uh, my family and also a dog who will do anything for Indian sweets and snacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it sounds like that writing is definitely your creative outlet. It sounds like your day job is much different than your your night passion, I guess, in a way. Um, and you've accomplished a, a great amount in the, the fringes of your day. I'm very impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Tara, how about you? Can you give us a little bit about the backstory on your work? Yeah, so I'm uh, an illustrator and painter. I was born in Mumbai, India, and I'm now based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm actually, I'm a little fresh to the picture book world. I only have two previous books, uh, The Tiger's Tale with Catherine Barr, which is out in the UK, and The Lion Queen with Reena Singh, that's out in the US. Um, and both of those titles are actually nonfiction, which is definitely what I gravitate towards a little bit. Um, but My Name As Long As It Ever is my first time working with uh, like a narrative um, fiction story. Um, so it was a really special experience for me. Oh, that's great. Now, I'm learning a lot in this podcast on how authors and illustrators are paired together. And most of the time, it's, it's I don't want to say random, but you don't 
you don't really know each other or know who's going to be paired together until you are. And then someone somewhere knew the magic that, that could probably come to be. How did this collaboration between the two of you work? Was it something that was planned or was it you two came together around this book for the first time? Um, I'll take that. So we did come uh, together for this book for the first time. However, I've been a fan of uh, Tara's art for a long time now. I've been following her on Instagram and um, you know, following all her all the art and the books that she's illustrated for. So uh, when my name is Long as a River came about, uh, my editor and I came up with a long list of uh, illustrators that we wanted to contact. And Tara was definitely on the top of our list. So um, so when they contacted her, I was really hoping and crossing my fingers and toes that you know, <laughs> Tara would be available to illustrate the book and she would say yes. And I'm really lucky to have her um, illustrate. My name is Long as a River. I couldn't have asked for a better illustrator. I mean, if you read the book, you will see she has truly captured um, South India and uh, also the lens of uh, the culture and the customs and traditions through the eyes of a child. And she has that eye for detail when it comes to customs and traditions and the everyday life of this uh, character. And, um, uh, and like I said, I'm just a fan and uh, Tara has delivered totally. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think it was interesting because I actually knew of Suma's work through some of the other illustrators that she had worked with. It's we're quite a small, tight-knit community of in illustrators of Indian descent. Um, and so we tend to keep up with each other's work. And that's how I actually found your books through Namaste is a Greeting. Um, and when this book came to me through my agency, I think I was still, I was at the tail end of finishing my, my degree. Um, and so I hadn't really started working on anything yet, anything big. Um, but it was a total no-brainer for me because um, I'm generally drawn to subject matter that allows for a degree of lushness and like detail. And this text was so lush and so poetic. I could see so many, so many opportunities for just like painterliness and like a collaboration between the kind of poetry that you can get with words and like a similar approach to painting. And they come together to kind of like create like a fun alchemy um so yeah I was I was very very attracted to the writing and my name is Long as a River and my experiences of South India have been primarily as a child my dad's family are from there and so I spent summers between Bangalore and uh, Hyderabad and it's not they're not places that I've spent a lot of time as an adult so my lens of those places and those scenes is actually almost exclusively as a child um, so it was very interesting to draw on that and like old family photographs and photographs that Suma provided um, as well for the the pictures in the book. I I love that though because even though you haven't been there as an adult, you you're bringing that childlike wonder to the book, which is what you're remembering. And you mentioned the word alchemy, and I've got to say that's what jumped out at me with this book. And we can talk about some of the choices you made after, but. There's such a feeling that, at least for me, that is instantly evoked in this book from the words, from the essence and the theme of the story, but blended together with those beautiful, warm strokes of color. You just feel it like you really, really feel it. It's just a be it's a beautiful pairing. I I loved it. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh, you are welcome. So let's let's actually talk about the book. Let's give um, listeners, since it is coming out in a couple of days and is likely brand new for them, let's give them a, a little overview of it. You know, from from my point of view, as I already mentioned, the book is beautiful, and it is this touching book on the power of names, right? And celebrating them, understanding the meaning behind them, appreciating them, wearing them proudly, all of the things. And I would love, Suma, if you could tell us a little bit about the book from your perspective and perhaps why. Why this book and why right now? Uh, sure. So um, now I, I think I should really talk to you about the inspiration of this book and where it came from, right? So um, um, 
uh, as you know, my name is Suma Subramaniam, but it's not quite my name because my name story is a common one in India where I was born. And um, I, I was given two names uh, and uh, the names were both uh, named, they, I was named after my grandmothers who were both rebellious and victorious in their own ways. So one name was Jai Lakshmi, which means the goddess of victory. And the other name is for my daily use, which is Suma. And Suma means uh, flower in Kannada, which is a South Indian language. But over the years, um, my name changed and um, people misspelled it and mispronounced it. And um, also it was entered wrongly in my legal records. So um, I couldn't, I, I think as I grew in, as I grew into an adult, I just became tired at one point because I couldn't put myself through more paperwork and the hustling involved in making corrections to my name. And I could no longer visit the, revisit the original name that I was given and make a change yet again. So the inspiration for this book um, came from the many, many times people struggled to spell or say my name and then gave up, leaving me feeling ignored, overlooked, and unseen. So I wrote this book drawing from the history of my own family. And uh, if you look at the main character, her name is Kaviri Tanjavur Jai Lakshmi Ganesan. And Kaviri would have been the name of my miracle child if I'd had one. It's also uh, my husband's great grandmother's name. And the name of the river that connects our family's ancestral origins. Uh, Tanjavur is the city in South India where my elders lived for many years. Jai Lakshmi is my other name that is primarily used for uh, special ceremonies. And it's also my husband's grandmother's name as well as both my grandmother's names. And Ganesan is my grandfather's name. So, um, so if you think about why pronouncing a name correctly is important for children right now, children in schools come from different backgrounds, but something that they share in common is their name. And if and it's part of their cultural identity. So when a name is mispronounced or changed um, consciously or not, it can lead to a child feeling invisible. And uh, with globalization, the number of names that we cannot pronounce is, is going to increase and we are going to make mistakes and we're not perfect. However, it's important to make the effort to say it correctly. And when a name is mispronounced or misspelled, we're not only changing a person's identity, but we're also disrespecting them. And it's okay to ask for help if we struggle. It's okay to let someone know how to pronounce your name. So the back matter in my name as long as a river has several tips on how to get names right. Um, and that is what I hope <clears throat> children uh, find with this book because the reader, uh, it takes the reader on a journey of exploration along the river Kaveri in South India. And the main character Kaveri comes away with a rich understanding of her name's meaning and significance. So I adopted this narrative approach to tell the story so readers can experience Kaveri's world through her eyes. And I lived in South India for more than two decades. And still, I also gained an improved understanding of the cultural context when I drew elements from my own family history when I wrote the book. Oh, so beautiful. I, I think, you know, and to connect to the illustrations, I think this is so neat that I get to go back and forth to to the two of you. Um, you do get right at the beginning of the book, um, the main character is not so sure about the wonderfulness of her name. Um, and what I love, Tara, that that you have done, the, the things that, well, there were three things that really stood out to me. And, and the first two were, you know, once at the beginning of the book, there is a portrait of her. It's a it's a smaller kind of portrait in the beginning. And then at the end, when she's seeing, by the time she gets to the end and she realizes what her name represents, what it means, the connections it has, how amazing and important it is, that final portrait that's toward the end, not the last page, but the second to last page, it's a much bigger portrait. The look of 
pride is on her face and it just looks like she is glowing to see that transformation from beginning to end and 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 see how the journey, the the physical journey she took, as well as the emotional one of, of people kind of explaining where her name came from, just so powerful to experience that shift in what she thought about it with her. So, Tara, I love, I love the the changes from the beginning to the end. And I don't know how you captured it so beautifully in that last page, but it did just look like she was shining from within. Yeah, I think um, for me, those two spreads, um, it was kind of important to have a little bit of symmetry. And I think the textiles have been very important in, throughout the book. Um, and for me, they were kind of a shorthand for uh, culture or like a relationship to culture. And so in the first page, that little portrait of Kave, it is, um, it's placed on like a huge background that is a textile design, like it's a, it's, it has a little border. Um, and she's kind of inside of it, but it's not, she's not quite able to make it her own. She's a little dwarfed by it. And then at the end, you see her um, when she's wearing the dhavani that's been given to her by her grandmother. Um, and she's she's much larger on the page. There's like a beautiful sunset behind her. There's light on her face. Um, and you see her really wearing the the culture, the garments, the um, her name really, like she's able to exist within it and not let it wear her. Um, and so that was like an important journey uh, kind of to, to depict in between those two points. And I loved it. Like you opened that page and it just, it just stopped to kind of take it in. You could just, you could feel, you could feel the warmth from the outside and then feel, I think the pride and the, the feelings that she had developed over the course of the book there as well. The colors are gorgeous. The prints, the strokes, they're gorgeous. They give just this warm feeling that is a that it is evoked there tell me tell me about the choices you made to to really bring the story to life how how did you do that <laughs> so um for me so I mean I don't really I don't have a, the same problem as Kaviri or Suma my name is quite an easy name I think the civil combination of Tara exists in a lot of cultures um but for me what I like about my name and indeed about Kaviri's is that uh, my name Tara is the common word for a star so it's like it's something that you would use when you point to the sky and you like are telling the child like what's that um, and similarly like her name Kaveri is something that she can point to in her surroundings and that's the same word for something that is around her all the time um, and I kind of like that uh, ability to kind of situate yourself in the language in the world around you in a very everyday sense rather than in a way that is distant from how we use language to name other things in general um, and so it was important to me to have elements of the river even when you couldn't see the river so the, the a lot of the fabric is kind of flowing the way water would um, a lot of the shapes are flowing or curving in the way a river would the river I think was a, a big element that I wanted to have uh, represented in some way on every page because I think there's uh, there's also in Suma's writing, like the thing that drew me to it was there's a way that the natural world is kind of coming into the storytelling quite subtly, but I think it really does add a, a sense of atmosphere and like like a lot of power. Like there's a, um, in the beginning, in the middle of the book, when they get off the train, it starts to rain very heavily. Um, and then she's learning about one part of her name. She sees her family and the clouds clear and the, the whole family is going to a temple. Um, and for some reason that, the atmospheric quality of uh, the rain and the clouds clearing and the light changing and being near the river, the kind of groundedness of that was very, very attractive to me. And so the, the both the river, the natural world, those were elements that I wanted to work into um, the page, my approach to doing the textiles, doing the characters, how everybody was kind of relating to their surroundings. That was quite important to me. And I think it also, um, the, the natural world is just such a, rich area for texture, which I think paint lends itself to so well. And so it was just um, just a, a nice focus um, to kind of tie everything in the book together. I'd say much more than nice. It was gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> the book the book is gorgeous. Um, and I know, um, Suma, you talked about your inspiration for writing the book. Um, and as a reader, one thing that I thought of, and I imagine a lot of readers will do as they read the book, is to think about my own name. And especially after reading the author's note in the back and how 
in some cultures how those names are chosen and why. And it really got me thinking, well, why was my name chosen? What does my name uh, mean? And, and so your book did spark me to do a, a little bit of research um, on my own name, which I can imagine could be fun for readers. Um, I looked up what my name actually means. So Stephanie means crown or wreath or garland which I did not know. And I reached out to both my mom and my dad and I said, got a really odd question for you. Why did you name me Stephanie? <laughs> and my, my mother said that in her entire pregnancy, she was convinced that my name was Tara, which is interestingly <laughs> not talking to you, Tara. Um, and she said, but when you were born, I just looked at you and I knew, no, that doesn't fit you. And just instantly thought of the word Stephanie. And so then I reached out to my dad and said, why was I named Stephanie? And he said, well, you know, I liked the name and I really loved that your first name would have the same number of syllables as your last name. So my maiden name was Stephanie Ostrander. So I had three and three. And I thought, this is why my dad and I share so many parts of our brain, because that isn't a deep familial cultural significance but boy it made me so happy because words matter so much to me so this book really did spark some fun research and some connections you know with with my parents and family that i might not have thought i've never thought to ask before so i imagine that this will bring readers that same sense of curiosity about their own name and, and perhaps the opportunity to dig into it and even just have conversations with their parents or those caregivers or those around them into this topic as well. Oh, I'm so, um, I'm, uh, this makes my heart burst with joy when I heard <laughs> that you went back and you looked into your own family history and the history of your name. And uh, Stephanie, that is just such a beautiful story. Uh, thank you for sharing it with us. I, um, it, it pretty much uh, lived the example of like a book being um, serving as a window um, mirror and sliding glass when you uh, shared your story with us. And that's uh, pretty much the point of every book that uh, writers write these days. And um, it's really about providing that hope and support for readers to show um, to show them how fun it can be when cultures are blended together. And uh, and I would uh, certainly like to see readers tap into their inner abilities and their own names. And it's not just about celebrating and cherishing um, um, who they are, but it's also about how their radical representation in books like mine uh, can help build a better future for all of us. And we are making space right now for all children to imagine themselves in positions of leadership and power within their families and communities. And so to recognize the strength in fostering such diverse friendships is our strength. So thank you really for sharing that with us because that means everything. Oh. You are welcome. I was just, I like I said, this book evoked such a feeling of warmth and and comfort and and knowing that story, um, and then being able to dig a little deeper to my own. It does feel like you feel you feel good when you when you know where you came from. You know, everybody has an origin story, whatever it is. Every name has some sort of story, um, no matter what the significance of it. And just knowing something you know, as a 40 something year old that I didn't know before about my name, it just makes you feel, it makes you feel really, really good. And, yeah. and I have a feeling that this book will do this for every reader, just that idea of that names are special and they are meaningful and it's worth taking the time to not only celebrate yours, but celebrate everybody else too, no matter what their name is or what it means that it's just as important to them and therefore should be respected and celebrated and take the time to get to know it. I think it's a, a, a beautiful book, as I mentioned at the start and in so many ways. 
where is the best way that they can find both of you online? First to find this book, but then hopefully to dig into some of the other projects that you have. Do you want to go? Uh, yeah, I can go. I can go. Um, so you can find most of my work at my website, taraanandart.com. Um, and I'm also on Instagram at Tara Anand Art. Um, those are two of the places that you can find most of my work. I have a newsletter that's taraanandart.substack.com where I sometimes have work a little earlier than I maybe should be putting out. Um, but it's a good place for sneak peeks and pre-order links and things like that. Um, and just to see where books are concerned behind the scenes process, which is always exciting. Great. And Suma? And uh, I'm also um, available through my website, sumasubramaniam.com. Um, and I'm also Suma Subramaniam on Instagram and uh, Suma underscore V underscore S on um, Twitter, which is X right now, and Suma Subramaniam on Facebook, Suma Subramaniam on LinkedIn and TikTok. So uh, I'm everywhere. Um, and the best place to buy the book Um is uh, either through my publisher's website, Penguin Workshop, or um, uh, the pre-order links are also available on um, my website as well as Tara's. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I'll make sure to put the links to both the websites, to all of your social media handles, as well as a sub stack. I love sneak peeks. So I will be going over to pop my email in there. And if listeners are listening to this in real time on the day it's released, they can pre-order now. And your book birthday will be in just a couple of days on the 28th. So that is exciting. I'm so grateful that you spent the time here with us getting ready for your launch. And I can't wait to see it out in the wild with all readers reading and learning and loving from it and hopefully digging into their own name story as well. Thank you both so much for coming onto the podcast today. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're most welcome. And listeners, thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you inside the next episode of the Kid Lit Love podcast. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Kid Lit Love podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes at alitlife.com. And if you want more, you might like to listen to my other podcast called Get Literate. It's a podcast that explores all things books and reading, notebooks and writing, and everything in between to build a life you love. One more thing. If you love what you listen to today, please take a moment to rate and review the podcast or take a screenshot of the episode and text it to a bookish friend. This helps the podcast grow and builds our bookish community of kid lit love. Thanks for listening.